J.O.'s fielding comments, but yep. there's a little bit of a delay between my phone going to space and then coming back to his phone. Well, you know, just in case we say the bad words, we can cut them out. <laughs> yeah, we have to have delays now for that. Yep, yep. Pam and Jason and Britton. Yeah. We want to wait or go? We can we do whatever you want. Let's give it a couple minutes. We'll see who else jumps on here. Should we practice like doing like the skit guys or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just went to that edited comment there. Yeah. yeah. While we're waiting, hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. Um, I know we did. I was telling some of you, our the chaos of our Christmas is usually before Christmas. So Christmas Day was pretty chill. Just at home with the boys. And it's good. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, I felt this year that it was very chill. Christmas Day for us, which... Usually feels like you're running around. We didn't do our uh, Christina's side of the family until a couple of days later, so I think that probably helped. Christmas Eve was maybe a little, a little more intense, <laughs> right? But yeah. Still a fun time with church. Yeah, but the Browns gave us a Christmas present, and then another one. Then another one. Yeah, that's exciting stuff. We're just chatting here. We'll give it a minute here for people to jump on. And then we'll get started. But I hope you're ready. This is meant to be interactive. Uh, hopefully you guys can drop some comments as we share some things. And uh, I don't know. Maybe after this you'll be like, let's just do church online all the time. There you go. But it's not the same. No. We miss seeing you all. Yeah, I can see you. We're physically yeah, we're present, physically here. but that would be hard <laughs> if it was just us and no one else. Oh, that's how it works. So I can just tap it and then. Good morning, Jane. Well, we wow. get, you know, 12, 13, yeah. 12. Yeah, we're good. So, you know, that's. Probably times 10 for each person at their house watching, so. <laughs> yeah, mine's plus four. All right. Cool. Um, do we want to start with a song? Up to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. That was probably really loud. Uh, so what uh, J.O. and I talked about as we start, I'll probably just open us up in a word of prayer, but uh, we do have some songs planned, and then uh, we have some uh, scripture to look at, but for the most part, just kind of go where the Spirit leads and interact with you all, and then uh, maybe ask some questions with that. So, uh, oh wow, man, we got, this is like professional, except I, I didn't get my makeup done, so sorry, but anyway, <clears throat> it took me about an hour. Did it, yeah. Yeah. Jay was, when I walked in the door, he's like, hello, good morning. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, let me pray for us, and then maybe we'll just, uh, we'll do a worship song together, and then we'll look at, uh, look at some of God's word. God, you're good, and uh, God, as we look at this, um, I guess a week of transition where the, the Christmas season dies down, and then... Uh, here we come into a new year of 2024, and uh, what goes with that? Uh, I know many people uh, set some new directions, set some goals that uh, they want to see happen in 2024, and, and God, uh, I know we're praying for you to do some amazing things uh, in this year to come. And so, may we all just uh, enjoy the time this morning, uh, even though a little different, a little, uh, little more techy, but uh, we can still interact around you and your word. 
and uh, so we just guide our time. May uh, we just be filled by you and enjoy you. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me Walk with
and have a Mexican and I'm looking down this table of like all these guys and they're riled up and they're talking and and I had this like moment of nostalgia where it was like I wonder if they realize that one day they're gonna kneel before the king and confess that that he is Lord and uh, this song just made me think of it that there will be a day where all are going to bow before him um, unfortunately we know in the Bible talk about that there are going to be those that bow before him but will be uh, spending eternity without him um, so uh, that made me think uh, obviously 2024 even as a church uh, yeah we've made a declaration we want to see 100 people right. come to know Jesus and uh we want those hundred people when they bow before the Lord. It's a different moment. It's a realization of like, oh my gosh, this is what I what I long for. What what home is? And so, uh, I guess I think of the words of Jesus when when he said, basically, open your eyes, look up uh, at the harvest. And uh, I think my heart for this year is our eyes are open to just see the need uh, of people that uh, right now are on the other side of this song. They're yep. going to kneel and bow and confess right. Jesus is Lord, but then they'll be separated for eternity. Uh, but we want, God wants them, we want them all to uh, enjoy eternity with us. So maybe we'll sing that chorus again. Just, yeah. Last one there. There will be a day when all will bow before him, there will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. There will be a day when all will song uh the first time i ever sang that song was actually at a uh a funeral for basically my adopted grandma and she had lived a long good life 96 i think it was but i had the opportunity to sing it with my with my siblings and my mom um and it was just like kind of like a glimpse of heaven um i don't know i've i think i'm getting I'm getting emotional, I'm more emotional in my old age. Uh, but Mary would definitely agree with that. <laughs> but when, but a lot of times when we're we're singing, I mean, like when I'm, I, I know the last three years I haven't gotten to just kind of be in the audience yeah. singing. But when I've when I've been there recently, like I've got a glimpse of heaven in a different way. When I yeah. hear people singing, and just kids, adults yeah. alike, it's just like. This is what it's going to be like. There will be a day yeah. when we're all going to be standing before him. And we're going to be shouting his praise. We're going to acknowledge it's him on the throne and no one else. Yeah, yeah I was thinking of, uh, uh, I, I wish I had this image constantly in front of my head, but um, when you just think of like the glimpses in scripture of like the throne of God and how it's like, whoa, uh, from Isaiah, where the train of his robe filled the temple, and then we see these like creatures right. that Revelation says has eyes all over their body, and they just say, "Holy, holy, holy!" Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord God Almighty. And so, I don't know. That always encourages me, where I'm like, "God's got it. It doesn't matter where you're at, what season you're in, or 
if you're on your face right now. It's right. like he's on his throne in this like atmosphere of worship, not panicking over who's right. gonna be the next president. Yeah, exactly. Or it's just the peace he gives. Or that school superintendent, <laughs> even, you know. <laughs> or Strongsville football coach. Yeah, exactly, it, you know? exactly. But yeah. Cool. Mm. Nice. Um if you guys want to drop in the comments, so one uh, one question I had: Does anybody have a New Year's resolution that which starts tomorrow? By the way, Whoa. Um, all of you should say, "Yeah, I'm going to read through the Bible in 2024," because we're going to do that as a church anyway. But <laughs> yeah, that's a New Year's resolution. That's a New Year's resolution. We'd like to just read through the scope of Scripture, and I think when we do that keeping in mind that it's really all one story that ultimately points to Jesus uh, is kind of cool that we get to do as a church. But anybody else have New Year's resolution they want to do? I can uh, dust it off to help people a little bit. Um, I have, I, I, I actually have, I'm an accountant, right? So I, <laughs> I have like a note sheet um, that I keep um, and I like try to add it. Uh, I know... Uh, some people read a crazy ton of books. I used to read a lot when I was a kid, and I lost it. So every year I try to, I, I want to read 12 books. Um, that's the goal, so a book a month. Um, and then I, I actually itemize it so I know which books I've read. So sometimes I'll read the same ones again. But one thing that's really helped me is uh, I have a word of the year. Um, and... Last year, also 23, it was patience. And I didn't do a great <laughs> job on patience sometimes. That could be my word every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, this year's going to be endurance. Um, endurance to finish well. Endurance to love my family, love um, everyone. But then also just endurance to see uh, people come to, to know Christ. Um, to push kids uh, further to a deeper understanding of, of who Jesus is. Yeah. But what was cool was, um, I'm on a tangent a little bit here, but uh, so Lucia and I were... I'm going to go to the bathroom. Okay. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah. I'll just talk to you guys. Um, but uh, Lucia and I uh, were together. We went on a little date yesterday and we were talking and um, she asked, so what... What did you learn in 2023? She started the conversation. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> She's only 10. <laughs> I have to remind her of that. Uh, but then we got to talking, and then um, I told her about how I have a word of the year. She's like, oh, could I do that? I'm like, sure. What do you think? And um, she's like, trust. She already had one for 24. Just trust that what God has in store is greater than what we can see. Um, and she even had like an idea for it. So that was, that was really cool. Um, just to have have that, but a word of the year kind of it can it can have a life of its own, but it can be an onion too, right? Sure. It can just be patience, right? So just just be patient with people, but it could be so much further and deeper than that. You know, patience in times of struggle. You know, patience when it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, patience so you can, with your children. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> yeah, or you need to be patient with others. You know, yeah, like. Sure. Uh, so you can you can really dive deep with it. Yeah. I actually really like the word idea. <clears throat> so Mary has to read seventy five books. So my twelve just. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Mary would have a book goal. That's awesome. That's she really did good. hundred the one year. Jason has no other resolutions at the Wilson. They don't want to have any other resolutions. That's a goal of twenty four. <laughs> That's how I'm reading it at least. <laughs> My resolution is no resolution. No resolution. <clears throat> I get it. You know, and that's one thing that uh, resolution, sometimes I struggle with that word. Because right. we should have goals. Um, sure. You know, so if you have personal goals, maybe that helps people. Because, I mean, everyone wants to be more fit in 2024, yeah. right? Um, yeah, the sales of uh, exercise equipment are th go through the roof. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <clears throat> I, um, funny thing with me, <clears throat> you might appreciate this, Jason and Pam, I'm actually not a big, like, New Year's resolution kind of person. I think, I, I think it's a good, 
reset for a lot of things, but I'm also uh, like the best time to make a change or to do something is now. Exactly. So uh, I, personal journey too, just like, which I always do this some for some reason, like right before the holidays, but I just was like, you know what? I'm going to be more careful what I eat. I'm going to eat a little more healthy. And of course I decided that like right around right, Thanksgiving, yeah. <laughs> but that's fine. But I'm, I'm just like, when, when that conviction settles, you're like, man, I need, I need to make a change. I'm always like, well, do it now. Yep. And we got to wait till 2024. Right. Um, but I do think, yeah, I think that's, that's good. Cause now's the time too. It's just weird. We go by years. So here's 2024. What do we want to see God do? And, uh, all that. So, yeah. I think I have one, one more. So Christina said, being more intentional in each interaction this year. Mm. Good. We were just, uh, pregame. Sorry. We we're just sitting here talking about the art, right. Of asking good open ended questions, yeah. which Christina, you made me think of it would lead to kind of pricking a more intentional conversation rather yeah. than like, Hey, how's your day? Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I almost think like, how are you is, I mean, that's a uh, one word. Yeah. You know, you don't, do you even register that someone's asking you how you're doing? No. Good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I used to test people when I was at college, they'd say, Hey, how you doing? And I'd be like, hanging in there like Judas. That's such a bad joke. Oh, man. Sorry. Um, I like to hang in there. Yeah. I do that. But, to take but then they'd be like, okay, cool. And they just move on. Like they, My point was like, clearly they didn't hear a word I said. Right. But yeah, being intentional. Too. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Can we, is there time to cut that out? Probably not. Probably not. No, not when we're live. <laughs> Post-production doesn't work that way. I um, want to dive into a uh, little bit of scripture. Uh, I was kind of all over the place, but I guess we'll trudge on here through the book of Luke, which uh, I shared this uh, in our Christmas Eve service, but we're actually in Luke chapter two, hey, we made which it. is good. Um, and what grabs me here is, is like we read it as the Christmas story, but I think it, again, we have to point back and always remember that like what we read in this book is true. Mm. It's not like, oh, that's a cool story. Somebody made that up. And uh, it's good guidelines to live by. But it's actually true of what happened. And why I like Luke is because he's like the doctor that's like, oh, let me research this. Yeah. And so what he documents, not only is it in beautiful order, but uh, there's factual things in it. So like Luke chapter 2, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Uh, that's factual. Mm. Um, that he did that. Which led, obviously, uh, in verse 4, it says, So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Which we've talked about that. It goes all the way back to prophecy and Jesus about to be born into the line of David where promises made to David that your throne will last forever, uh, referencing Jesus. Um, so when I think of, we were talking about this too, in 2024, uh, ironically, it ties in with Luke 2. You have a new beginning of 2024, but when Jesus was born, that was a huge, uh, I guess call it a new beginning for mm. all of God's people. Uh, and Zechariah, when he prophesied back in the end of Luke 1, said it beautifully, uh, just that our, our redemption has come. Like, it's, it's, there's some finality to that, of what Jesus did. Um, so, Jesus is a new beginning, uh, along with how we are too. Any thoughts on that? Nope. <laughs> you can say that. Well, you're hitting new beginnings and new starts. Um, it, it just tagging back onto your resolutions thing and change starts now. Yeah. Um, 
why is it that I'm gonna open ask an open ended question. <laughs> so why is it that we gravitate towards a beginning of the year and not a change now mentality? You know, when we know clearly like, okay, let's say I'm twenty pounds overweight. Well, January first I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it hard. Yeah. But it's November third. You know, why not start now? Yeah. What do you why do you think we have that type of mentality? I have something percolating too, but curious. That's it's a good question. It's funny too because I I don't have the research. Maybe somebody can look it up. But like, how many of those like fitness weight goals that people are like January one, boom, we're doing it. Here we go. And then like January tenth, they're like, yeah, I think I'm done. Yeah. And so, I guess. In my mind, I guess there is a both and to it. I think there is a, uh, obviously, our calendars happen. You even see, which we might look at, uh, the, this rotating uh, God with Israel and Leviticus 23, like these feasts and festivals, like I want you to do these things. And they all point back to remembering uh, of God and what he's done. And so, yeah, I think, yeah, January 1st every year is one of those like reminders of, hey, this is this is a new thing. Mm -hmm. God's obviously not uh, bound by time, but he created it. <laughs> so we have this revolving thing. But uh, I'm not really answering your question <laughs> now that I think about it. But uh, yeah, I think, I think there's an amp up. I think goals are good. And I guess... I think it's hard for me to answer because I'm I'm more of a <laughs> I'll just do it yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so you have the answer. You yeah. you want to jump in, but I think it's huge though. Like I obviously as a church we have goals, and so I think those are good. In in my mind, they're more like that January one. Those resolutions are more. How do I? I don't even want to say track. How do I monitor? Okay, here's what I'm looking for God to do. Here's you know, physical, spiritual, emotional goals. It's more of a, how are we pacing? How are we tracking? Is, is some of that is, is what we're doing working. Mm -hmm. And then we can tweak it and evaluate. Yeah. But what yeah. else is percolating? Well, I, I, the word that came to mind is habit. Mm -hmm. um, it's in our habit. You know, it's in our nature to do, to look forward to something, right? So we put sure. something out there to, that's our mark. Um, but I think that if we, the longer we let a habit continue, probably a bad one, let it continue, you know, because good habits, good habits tend to be ones that stop sooner and bad habits continue. Um, but it, you know, okay, so I'm going to start a good habit in 2024, but I'm going to keep doing the bad habit until 2024. Well, by the time we get there, it's probably going to, well, I'll push it out a month, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's, it says it takes 21 days to really get into a habit of doing something and only like three days to lose it. <laughs> or less. Yeah, or less. Yeah, exactly. Maybe three hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know I've talked about that too, but like when you study the brain. By the way, if you guys mm. thoughts, questions, pop them in there. Jay is going to look at some. Yeah, well, Mary's commenting on um, why... We wait till the new year uh, because we don't want to miss out on the holiday food. That's, oh, that's yeah, truth right there. That is. Um, but I may or may not have splurged. A bit over <laughs> um, Jane actually mentioned something on the resolutions or 2024. I plan to try to engage the people I come across on a daily basis in conversation with the goal of sharing Jesus. Hmm. That's yeah. pretty cool. No, it's uh, the psyche thing, and I shared this, like, when you, like, study the mind, like, when you start to make a pivot and a change, it, like, physiologically, it changes your brain. Mm. Your synapses, like, are firing a different right. way. But that takes, that's why, I, I don't know how, I know people have researched the 21-day thing, which I think is true. I think that starts, actually, a physical yes. branch in your brain, but in one day... Oh yeah, it can get taken back over, which goes into a lot of a lot of the scriptures. Even the old, 
will pass away. The new mm. has come. But yeah, our flesh. Ooh, crazy. So you're saying the old and the new. Why so often we go back to the ritualistic laws? Because those are things that we we were doing. You know, yeah, like, sure. like in the Old Testament, right? That was, okay, 614 laws. Got to follow all of them, right? Yeah. Um, then Jesus came and took care of some of those laws. And up the ante on <laughs> Well, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. But our brain path was already formed, right, yeah. to, so it's very hard to change that. And that's not just days or years, but that's generations of... Huh, I never, we, um, I worked in a children's home for a while and they always talked about um, the neural pathways that you're yeah. talking about and adjusting it so that instead of just, instead of them just getting and reacting, the short wave, they actually let them process and they have to keep doing that over and over again to form the new brain waves. The same yeah. thing with Old and New Testament, Jesus upping the ante saying, hey, I am now, I'm fulfillment of the law. Now all of a sudden, wait, now i got to change the way I'm doing things? Yeah, but I'm so comfortable in the way I have done things. And then that can go even into the habits that we still do today because we're comfortable. That's what we like to do. Hmm. It's true. Well, I think it's uh, you're actually making me think of the, the first and first Peter. Hmm. Uh, the, there's others too, but first Peter 3, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Um, but there's this verbiage, you see it a lot through the New Testament, made me think of the where it's easy to say, oh, God said in you know, Deuteronomy, don't do this. Check. Yeah. I don't do it. When you what Jesus ushered in was this whole thing of like, uh, in Peter's, you see all the authors of the New Testament use similar verbiage, but it's this like new birth or uh walking in the spirit of God, which is a lot harder. Okay. That takes a little more intuition to be like, oh, how is God leading me? Or is he, um, Jane, thinking of even your comment of, and I try to to think of this as I interact just like with people in my daily life, is like knowing that there are certain people in my path that God is drawing mm -hmm. to where right. maybe it's time for me to be that person that actually leads them to Jesus. But then there's other people in my path where I feel sometimes God's like, just plant a little seed. Mm. Just love them, do something, whatever. Just, uh, and you've said this before, Joe, but like some plow, some reap, some. Yep. So, so I think, and I think that's the big thing when we're talking about renewal, even in the spirit of God that dwells in us. How do we live that out mm. with daily life? Because I think our knee, knee jerk is the Old Testament way of thinking about right. salvation. Right. Oh, hey, you're J.O., I'm Tom. You need Jesus. Well, that's easy because you can say like, oh, I shared Jesus with 50 people this year. But if you're walking in the spirit, it may be like, hey, I, this is on my heart. You need to know yeah. the story about the gospel. But other times the spirit may be like, hey, would you just love them? Would you mm -hmm. radically serve them? Mm -hmm. Because God sees four, five, six person that's actually going to share the message of Jesus with them and they're going to get it. Yeah. You know, so it's interesting. Think about the old versus the well, New Testament. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're loving on someone, that might not even be the person that ends up being the one that he has you lead to Christ. Mm -hmm. It could be your interaction with that person, and they have a good interaction with someone else because of that. And that person's the one that really needed it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, on the back end, yeah, yeah. The encouragement, right? right. Yeah, hmm. that's crazy. It goes a lot further than we ever see. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like uh, Jerry talks about this all the time. Um, you know, why we get stuck in traffic, or yeah. we, you know, we sleep in, or we are ten minutes late, and we might have missed an accident. You know, like, yeah. I think God's providence is is watching over us in that sense uh, a lot of times, but He's also prodding us to see the sixth or seventh person down the line. Yeah. But we're going to interact with just that one person. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, uh, this will chime in with, with Mary, and I, I know I've shared this story before, but we had a, a neighbors that were in the Marines, and they, uh, about six months before they left, they told us, like, hey, we're being relocated. You know, and, and then Mary and I and the kids were like, let's pray and unless someone dies, if they want to hang out, we're just going to hang out with them. And we did in that season, hmm. felt like we just needed to plant seed and plant seed, you know, and then uh, it was like two years later, we're friends on Facebook and uh, Katie was like posting this, like, I heart my church and I hmm. start looking and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like Mary. <laughs> yeah. But to think, sometimes we don't always see the back end of it, exactly. but to think we're all part of that journey that mm -hmm. God divinely knows right and we have a responsibility and i guess it goes back to that walking new in the spirit is yeah sometimes sometimes you're the closer right <laughs> but sometimes you you just need to love exactly and show them who jesus is with your hands and feet yep um, so yep for sure yeah and then it goes back to your three b's you know belong yeah. believe bless you got to make them feel belong first, you know, a lot of times, even with your story of the Marine family, because they felt belonged, yeah. they were searching for something else, you know, yeah. what, where, where do we get that, you yeah. know, and then they believed. Yeah. Love you, Shirley. Shirley. <clears throat> Yeah, any other thoughts, pop, pop them in the comments as we go through some of this. I uh, actually, now I'm looking at the notes I, I wrote down on that first first Peter. Mm -hmm. uh, the New Living Translation actually says that we live with like great expectation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you and I have talked about this, but uh, I don't always live that way where I'm like, you know, if I'm interacting with people in my daily life, let's say 2024. Uh, I don't know why the word awareness is coming mm, to mind. There you go. Um, maybe it's because I'm drilling that into my children right now. Uh, <laughs> you could have a word of the year for the family, you know? <laughs> hey, awareness. Like, I know you're all like, ah! That's why, that's also why I'm at J.O.'s house and not at my house. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just having that awareness of, I guess with my kids, it's more like, do you know there's like three drinks on the table? You shouldn't like body surf the table. Mm. Like, or they don't really do that. I'm just giving an example. But, but having that awareness of who God is leading in and out of my life and what my right. role is in that. Right. But Peter like talks about like living with that expectation. So having an expectation that God in his goodness, which blows my mind, would still use me in that to anticipate, God, you're using me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't feel it immediately, but that you are using me. Um, and I've shared before, I just think of the, I stole it from Steve Harvey, the great scholar, but just that, that remote analogy, like if I point my remote yeah. at my TV and turn on, I expect it to come on. Right. And if it doesn't, my first thought is my kids took the batteries out of the remote for their remote control car or something, but... But then it's like, no, to have that expectation of like, God, I'm interacting with this person and whether it's they're going to come to know you or whether I'm just moving them closer to you in their journey, to have an expectation that God is using me mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Um, in my sin and ugliness, his grace like proceeds, <laughs> yeah. proceeds that. Do you think that living with great expectation She's gonna kill me for this. <laughs> but like, oh wait, are you about to share a story? No, 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 no. That's no. what I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just like, um, I'm a, I'm, I have a bubbly personality. I'm like a glass extra full. 
sort of person. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what she's like, what? <laughs> like, you turn even the negative things into... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, like, great expectation. Like, something's going to happen. You know, like, even if, even in the most crummy situations, something's about to happen. Um, you know, and God always uses everything. Um, and I picture, like, so there's, there's a road to Alabama, and it's straight. But road being closed, you have to take a detour, right? You're still going to get there. God's, you know, ho hopefully, right? I mean, if, if you're willing to come back to the God, you know, that kind of thing, you make those decisions. But he's, he's still going to use you. He's still going to use it. He's going to just use that detour, that situation, that kind of thing. Yeah. I, that's what I was kind of thinking about with great expectation, like, Everything I do can be in great expectation of what God's doing. Just even getting groceries. I, I love Jane, what she's saying there, because it's like, even just a smile. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, there's, there's a lot of times where you're walking through the, you know, the grocery store or Home Depot or whatever, and you're like, oh my goodness, that person doesn't look at me. <laughs> yeah. They probably know Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just smiling, you know, like, maybe that's going to be their only positive interaction. Yeah. Uh, for the, for that day, for that month. Yeah. Which you may, may think a couple things, but I think it's important as like followers of Jesus, the Bible doesn't tell us to like fake it. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, yeah, we, we just yeah. always have to be happy. There right. was one man in my life, his name's Ed Lewis. If you ever see this, Ed, that's, he made it into like my top 10 questions when I get to heaven. Like, did Ed Lewis ever have a bad day? He was just, <laughs> always, Mary would know what I'm talking about, but but I think uh, sometimes the the back end of that is followers of Jesus, right? Is that we are to have joy, like mm -hmm. we are to have that peace that passes understanding. Right. It doesn't always <laughs> reflect in our facial right. expression, right? And maybe it should, but like this morning, I was telling Jay a super long day yesterday. I was pretty much outside all day in the yuck, and so I woke up this morning. You know, I'm getting ready to come here, and Mary's like. Is everything okay? Are you mad? <laughs> you just look like, like you want to kill somebody. And it, but it did. It was like, you know what? I bet there's days where interacting with people that I probably walk around that way. Mm. Even though I know, I'm like, wait, I got joy. Like the, the big problems I think that are big, like God's like, no, they're done. Yeah. And so it's just like putting our mind in that, which should lead to Hey, I can have a smile on my face. Right. I Man, it could be the worst day ever, but God's got it. And uh, the second, sorry, I'm now getting preachy, but I was actually listening to Joshua chapter one on the way down here. Mm. And I thought, I'm like, how crazy is it? Way back to uh, Genesis and the promise that God made to Abraham. Could, I mean, and so I guess when I think of expectation, we have to align that with God's expectation or submit that expectation to God. Mm. But I was just thinking of Abraham's promise this thing, then Moses is also uh, given promises by God. I guarantee those did not pan out. Right. <laughs> like, right. like maybe exactly. Not. Yeah, absolutely. Like, wow, my descendants are going to have... And then it's like, with Abraham even, it's like, then, you know, Sarah gets impatient. She goes, well, maybe you should right. lay with Hagar. Right. And, now we're going through all, now I feel like I have to lie or that she's my sister. And right. so, and then Moses, that's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. Bondage of Israel, which leads to wandering in the wilderness. I'm like, okay, all on the back of a promise <laughs> made by right. God. So maybe our expectation should be a little more realistic is like God will make promises. But I, I kind of, when you look at scripture, most of the time they're not like, oh, wow, that was easy. Right. Yeah, it's not A to B. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like, oh, it looks like it's going to be A, B, C, D, E, or Exactly. Exactly. But, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like that. What have we got in here? Any questions? <clears throat> nope. You guys still with us? Looks like. All right. We've All right. got 17 people still watching. What do you, uh, drop in the comments, too. We'll keep talking. What, uh... This idea of expectation, um, some of you kind of alluded to it. What do you want to see God do uh, in the coming year? 
And I think that's huge too, which we've talked about. This is this ultimately belongs to God, but there's I notice the difference in my own life is like something happens in our universe when we actually like write down goals. Yeah. And it's and they've proven it, Absolutely. which is crazy. And the statistics, like what, 80, 90% yeah. of people that actually write down goals achieve them. Yeah. Rather than just like, oh, in my mind, I'm saying, oh, yeah, I'd like saying to see this this year, but actually, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and if you go back to, like I'm pointing to my phone because that's where my, my notes are, but I like <laughs> have multiple years and I just add the next year to it. Mm -hmm. um, even like down to physical goals. Like I say when I completed it um, and I try to break down even by month just because it's like, because writing it down, okay, I messed up. I didn't do something for a couple of days or it, it's, it's even the Bible, right? Going through the Bible and you're having like that booklet um, or even doing it on new version because if you miss a day, we're going to miss a day. We're going to miss a week. Okay, where am I at? And I can pick up from there, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Having it written down, having it, because if it's just in your mind, oh, where was I? You know, like, yeah, yeah. you're just going to start where you are now currently. That's why I like on the on you version, speaking of reading through the Bible of the year, when you get really behind, you can just click catch me up. Yeah. <laughs> it shifts up. Yeah, it shifts the time. Yeah. It'll be a Bible in two years, but hey, it's, it's, still, it's still getting through the Bible. Yep. Yeah. And you can actually do it with friends. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I don't want that account. I'm just <laughs> that's actually in the book. That's one of the tips. Yep. Find someone to, yep. to encourage you. Yep. And and so so that Bible recap, um, I've had, I have a couple of buddies that we've gone through the Bible last couple of years on you version, different versions. So I, I was like, hey, what about this one this year? So the four of us are going to be going going through it. Oh, cool. I mean, you, anyone's welcome to join that uh, because what's cool is that at the end of it, there's a little like notes, so comments. So like after you watch in your uh, devotion or reading through the scriptures, you can comment on how how it was that day. That, huh. Yeah, so cool. it, it adds a little bit. But we have to be friends on you version. Friends. Friends. So yeah, I don't even. I We're don't real know. friends, but I didn't know you could be friends on you version. That's how much I use that. <laughs> I mean, I use you version, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah. There's a social side. Oh yeah, there's even even down to like habit forming um, for people like me that like to uh, sort of competitive. So it, it'll track the days that you go in the app. Oh, I so it's consistent days in the app and yeah. build it up. So that's pretty cool too. If it's anybody the, wants to be in a less competitive <laughs> group, <laughs> of encouragement. I'm just kidding. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, no one has any expectations. Nobody has expectations. Right? Yeah. Um, another passage uh, I was looking at. Wow, well, holy cow! You guys are awesome. <sighs> Maybe, or you're off to doing laundry and cleaning your house. And yeah, you just yeah, just up. listen. So here we go. So we've got some people that have commented now. Right. Austin is excited to do the Bible recap alongside us with his action. Oh, Bible. cool! So that's that's awesome. That's from Mary, and then Jason bringing family back to God. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Which is. Uh, I know we I kind of preach through this, but thinking of the goal of John the Baptist, hmm. which is if you like actually read it, it's it's prophetic. But I guess sometimes you think of like, oh, he's grabbing these people that are like utter pagans and they don't know God. But there's actually the piece of it is bringing people back hmm. to God, which you know it talks about he'll turn you know, parents and children back. So it's it's actually interesting this uh, that there's like the dual role. It's like, okay, I know Jesus, check. But then there's this like, maybe I did walk with God and I just kind of wandered mm. that we can draw people back or maybe think of the family kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, anyway, Ephesians... Uh, four. I'll just read this. Twenty-one to twenty-four. Another one I thought of. Uh, Surely you've heard of him 
and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. <clears throat> which, when you, I always read this, and I, then I, when I think about it, I read it differently. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. He actually uses a like present tense verb. Mm. Mm. He, he actually doesn't say you were being corrupted. He says your your actually old self is being corrupted. Yeah, like your flesh it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. But then he says to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self, which is different, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Um, so there's a mind shift of, yeah, you're, you're old, your flesh still stinks, yeah. but the newness of renewing your mind. Um, my mom made a, a song to that, um, Ephesians, um, you know, to kind of throw off the old self and put on the new self. Um, oh, there were emotions? Yeah, there were emotions, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't remember all of them, but I remember <laughs> the whole, like, the new self, like, you're, like, you're throwing it off, and then you're, like, put on the new self, you know, and, like, yeah. you're excited about putting on yeah. a new thing. Uh, back to even great expectations, but, it, yeah, sure. it's, it's constant, right? Because your, your self wants to turn to the habits, the things that are just going to, the self-talk that's going to drive you into the rabbit hole of self-pity or whatnot. Sure. Um, but the new self is is changing that, right? It's trying to yeah. get that. It, what You know what's really strange? Um, I think of C.S. Lewis and he talks about how evil is just twisted good. Mm. And I agree with that. Then I wonder, how, why, why are we bent on sin? I mean... Uh, Obviously, I know it's a rhetorical question, right? But, like, yeah. how can we get past that? I don't think we can this side of heaven, but, like, when we have that mind shift where we're, okay, I just, I, I'm, I'm bent towards doing evil. But if I just turn it on its head, now I'm, maybe I'm going in the direction that God wants me to go. Yeah. There, it's, well, it's funny, this is the same thing in back to the more research they do on our brain is like how it physically happens but yeah. we can't actually program our mind so that's a good point Jane I'm going to pick on you if you if you you can put the sticky note on your mirror every morning <laughs> or on your dashboard whatever but if it's like if every morning I literally woke up and I'm like I am choosing to be aware of the people God has in my path today well your mind is going to follow that trail Mm. And you'll see it. Yeah. It's just like I made the joke of like red car. Yeah. But if I said I'm going to give you $20 for every red car you see, now you're going to see all the red cars. Mm -hmm. So we can program that mind, but we can also do it the other way. Yeah. Where it's like, eh, it's kind of gloomy outside. I think I'm just going to stay in bed. And well, now you're already telling yourself, I'm not going to be that proactive today. Right. So, right. Which actually, this is a prime example. Was it? Thursday yeah our trash got delayed a week because the holidays usually it's Wednesday so I woke up Thursday I'm like oh, I got some work to do but I'm just gonna sit on my couch with my laptop and then I'm like I didn't plan on doing anything else today just like admin on the couch well then noon hit me because a I heard the sound of the trash truck down the street and I'm like Foo! and all of a sudden my body just jumped into like trash mode yeah to wear because uh many of you know like we're going on a trip so i'm like if i miss trash day we're in trouble and we already <laughs> are in trouble but so literally came down to this is just kind of funny story so i'm running my trash out to the street because it goes down the other side and then loops back around so and then there are my neighbors walking down the street with their dogs so i'm like well i better be a good neighbor i'm gonna sit and talk with my neighbors i'm like all right well i better get the trash out i literally am running the last bag down the driveway as they're like starting to pull away and then I made it. But what my point is, what that did was it just like energized my whole body. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, I don't want to sit on the couch anymore. Right. So I actually went 
to a job site and took care of, you know, like I, it just got me motivated and moving through the rest of the day. Yeah. So we do that and we can do it on a, more importantly, a spiritual level. Like if I wake up and I'm like, uh, I don't want to read three more chapters of right. numbers. <laughs> okay. Well, God, what do you, what do you want to teach me mm -hmm. in the book of numbers? I'm open. I'm willing. Your, your mind transitioned that. Yep. Yep. Very true. Yeah. How do you, how do you twist that so that your mindset is of the positive or mm -hmm. your, your call to action, your alert to, I mean, it's, it's even being alert to what enemy's trying to do the flip side, mm -hmm. right? He's trying to make it so that it's, it looks gloomy to you, right? But there's, you know, you might be able to see some blue sky if you look really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which Paul talks about that, right, too. Yeah. Like, we are not unaware mm -hmm. of his schemes. Right. Like, we should know. Which, honestly, are subtle as you wake up and you can tell your mind, yeah, I'm not going to do much today. Right. That's a scheme. Right. That Satan wants to get in there. Yep. Um, we had a guest appearance there. Oh, we did? By the dog. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> let Let's just maybe, maybe we'll wrap up with this. I'm going to go back to the uh, Old Testament in uh, Leviticus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. The pages always stick together. Um, Leviticus 23. We were actually talking about this. Um, I'm not going to go through it all, but if you look at Leviticus 23, you see these... Um, I'll read the first part. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed feasts, the appointed feast of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Um, and then what you're going to see, so this is the final comment thing I'd like you guys to give input on. What you will see through all these feasts, um, I'll just try to grab it as I look at scripture uh, the Sabbath is listed as first. Um, six days you may work, but on the seventh is a day of rest. And then he, th then he says, you are not to do any work wherever you live. So that's like rhythm number one. If you look at Passover and the unleavened bread in verse seven, on the first day, hold a sacred assembly and this, then again, do no regular work. Um, Four, seven days present, present an offering made to the Lord by fire. And on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Um, and then uh, some of it gets like more strict. Uh, feast of weeks is the same way. Uh, proclaim a sacred assembly. That's in verse 21. Do no regular work. Um, feast of trumpets. Do no, reg do no regular work, but present an offering made to the Lord by fire. Then you have the Day of Atonement. Um, but you, you just see this like rhythm of, uh, yeah, do no regular work. Mm -hmm. uh, again and again and again. And so I guess my question for those online and us is, what rhythms do we do or can we do that kind of sets... I know we do the church thing Sunday morning, Wednesday night, whatever, but even on a personal level, how do we make time where it's like, you know what? I'm not doing anything right now. This mm. is for me to zone in on what God wants to do in me and through me. How do we set those things up? I guess is the question. A poor one at that. But. Um, I know I'll just go for me. And this is, this is a battle too. Um, I'm usually driving a decent amount back to you version. So it's easy for me to be like, Ooh, I should listen to this podcast or maybe I just want to hear country music mm -hmm. on the radio. Okay. And then it's like, well, wait a minute. You, you might have an hour drive. Like how much of the Bible can I listen to mm -hmm. yeah. while I'm driving? Um, and then I'll be honest, maybe, you know, maybe I'm alone. I doubt it. But driving, listening to God's word, sometimes I'm like zoning in and out. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> like that it, it makes me think of something else. But it's kind of like the, there's some great sermon illustration in that. But basically, uh, just the guy says like, 
I couldn't tell you every sermon I've heard preached week to week. All I know was that I'm hungry mm. and I receive food. Mm. And it's this idea of like God's word just carries with you because it's God's word. Right. Whether you're like clinging to every little dot and tittle. But uh, yeah, so for me, it's like, man, you're driving, Tom, just listen to God's word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm even thinking I will zone even when I'm reading. <laughs> you know, like it's not just to listening, but it's also like you're reading and then you're like, oh, did I forget to turn off the stove? And what did I just meant, you know, like, so, you know, the mind wanders even when you're focused on a single task, yeah. whether it's driving or whether it's listening. But I find that I like that solitude of um, the car. Uh, and, and sometimes I wish that my commute was longer because of that, Some, you know, like mm -hmm. to... Be able to there's sometimes where i'm just like i need to listen to some classic rock you know just or i just need it to be completely silent or i need i want to listen to some you know worship music or you know on the way to work a lot of times i am listening um to a couple of devotional podcasts or even even the bible that kind of thing uh but it is i find a lot of times that the more you inundate your mind, your life, because we drive a lot with the Bible, like the more you just, oh, that's just, it becomes a habit where you just turn to that first. Sure. Um, even like on Apple phones, it'll say like, hey, you usually use this, you know, while you're driving, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Or frequently used apps, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's, it notices patterns as well. Yeah, I think I'm a fan. I. You guys can fight me later. Mary might. I don't know. Uh, I think in that vein of like, how do we, when we kick off a new season, when we kick off our day, that's why I'm a fan of like getting in God's word early in the morning mm -hmm. versus, oh, I'll do it before I go to bed. Because I think it does impact your day moving forward. Uh, so that's my thoughts. Like when I hop in, of course, Mary's probably like, oh, it must be nice to drive in silence and be able to listen to, <laughs> to God's word. Right. But um, but some, anything like that, that can, like, okay, I just need some quiet before the Lord and then start my day makes yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Um, what about you guys? Final thoughts on what do you do to kind of shut the world out, let some God in? Got nothing right now. Nothing. Yeah. They're all, they're like, I got dishes to do. People can yeah. wrap this. No. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm, I'm always constantly impressed at how long we can go. <laughs> you know. Uh, this is like an actual church service. <laughs> yeah. Like Christine and I were talking earlier, like, oh, you know, how long? I'm maybe a half hour. <laughs> we're over an hour now. <laughs> well, that's our idea. We're like, maybe we should make this like a podcast kind of format, which... Yeah, then imagine having it cut out, like, <laughs> it, yeah. We'll edit like, this, and then we'll post it. Yeah. And, uh, um, was that a comment on that? Nope, that was, no. that was nothing. Um, the cool thing with this being Facebook Live is you guys, you can rewatch it, yeah. and then uh, comment. Yeah, then, absolutely. Uh, and it, Even five start. years from now. Yeah, then. five years. Yeah. Um, so, do we want to close out? Do a song? Yeah, yeah we Let's can. Let's do a song. Yeah. We'll pray and... 2023 will be over. It's going to come to a conclusion. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I So
for joining us um as we wrap up uh i wasn't gonna do this but i feel like to uh a lot of you know so this uh jo and his family are transitioning to a, a new role at a different church and uh it's all good i think it goes back to all we talked about is uh i know i just have a peace i know god's got all things and uh even for us as a church family but i just wanted to pray for him Mm. and his family uh, until he joins the next podcast which I don't know if be, but, um, so uh, let me just pray for you and then uh, we'll sign off God uh, you are good mm -hmm. and uh, God this uh, this man before you like many of us uh, years ago you rescued from the pit yeah you not only um, redeemed him and saved him, but you uh, gave him gifts, a passion, and a calling. And God, we are so grateful for his leadership, his family that have uh, journeyed along with us at BNC for this season. But God, uh, you're moving.
moving them on to uh, other pastors and uh, calling them to, to serve um, at a different ministry. And that's awesome that uh, we're all your body, all your believers, and uh, so many so many fronts we can work on and serve you. And so I do pray, pray for J.O., pray for his family in this next season. Um, I know there's time management, juggling different things, mm -hmm. but would you strengthen them and uh, encourage them, God, that they uh, would be uh, bold and courageous mm -hmm. just with the task that you have at hand for them. God, help them to be aware, help them to have endurance uh, just in this season of ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and so God, uh, again, so grateful for their family and just pray that you would bless them immensely, use them in ways that uh, they can't take credit for, just to know yeah. that it was all you yeah. moving through yes. them. So God, uh, just guide them, bless mm -hmm. them, uh, continue to move in our church, yeah. uh, even though that there's a big hole there, but God, you have a plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just so grateful for how you've used J.O. and his family just in our midst. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. See you next year. Happy New Year. Tomorrow's January 1st, so uh, so you'll see you all tomorrow. I'll be stalking the Bible app to see who's on there now that I know I can socially attack people. I'm just kidding. I, wow. Actually, maybe we could be friends. Maybe we should cut this. Maybe we should get rid of this. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Love you guys. See you next year. Yep.